Greetings and peace and welcome to Messiah Lutheran Church, this beautiful spring day complete with showers. As we continue our Lenten journey with ashes upon our foreheads, as we seek the Lord. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of our salvation. Turn us again, O God of salvation, that the light of your face may shine on us. May your justice shine like the sun, and may the poor be lifted up. Let us pray. Direct us, O Lord, in all our doings with your most gracious favor, and further us with your continual help, that in all our works begun, continued, and ended in you, we may glorify your holy name, and finally, by your mercy, obtain everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A reading from Isaiah, the 53rd chapter, the 10th and 11th verse. And the Lord desired to crush him ill. Would he lay down a guilt offering? He would see his seed have length of days, and the Lord's desire would prosper through him. From his toil he would see light and be sated in his mind. After the suffering of his soul, he will see that light. My servant shall be the righteous in the right of many, and their crimes he shall bear. The word of the Lord. The psalm chosen for today is Psalm 19. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours forth speech, and night to night declares knowledge. There is not speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard. Yet their voice goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In the heavens he has set a tent for the sun which comes out like a bridegroom from his wedding ceremony and like a strong man runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the end of the heavens and its circuit to the end of them, and nothing is hid from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned, in keeping them there is great reward. But who can detect their errors? Clear me from hidden faults. Keep back your servant also from the insolent. Do not let them have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. A reading from the Gospel of John at the 19th verse, at the 19th chapter and 19th verse. Pilate also wrote a title and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. 
Many of the Jews read this title, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. The chief priest of the Jews then said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but this man said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and made four parts, one for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was without seam, woven from top to bottom. So they said one to another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scriptures. They parted my garments among them. And for my clothing, they cast lots. So the soldiers did this. But standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. The word of the Lord. May my words be in harmony with the universe, contribute to its justice, enhance its beauty, and help lead us all to peace on the earth. Amen. For my clothing, they cast lots. We continue today in Isaiah with the suffering servant. Robert Alter, whose translations we are using, has said this is a very difficult, or was a very difficult, uh, verse to translate. The Hebrew was very convoluted and challenging to him, so it's only more challenging to us. Confusing because after the servant is reported dead in a previous chapter, and buried, and a surrogate for Israel's sins, we have a conditional possibility of a long and happy life. Curious for this suffering servant, but maybe not curious for us. Perhaps it is that hint of eternal life. As we move to the gospel reading, in John, we have Pilate placing an inscription on the cross. In Latin, it's called a titulus, inscription, a title. And it was done, it says, in Hebrew, probably Aramaic, Latin, and Greek. I found this great picture of the inscription because it's in all three of the languages. Usually on crosses and crucifixes and other pictures, we usually just see I-N-R-I. The Latin, Iesus, Nazarenus, Rex, Eudeorum. Jesus from Nazareth, king of the Judeans. Is this more humiliation? Is this more mockery from Pilate? Is it a mockery of Jesus? Is it a mockery of the Jews? We never see the Hebrew written. And in the Orthodox Church, in Greek, instead of I-N-R-I, it's I-N-B-I. Because the Greek word for king is basileos. And so basileos, the B, replaces rex, the R. It's interesting 
that we have the Latin inscription that is so powerful and so widely used because the Gospels were written in Greek. And it would seem that the Greek would take precedence, but it shows the power of the Latin West in church history that the R-N-I-N-R-I is so prevalent. It's also interesting that this title, King of the Jews, or King of the Judeans, is only used by Gentiles. It's not used by anyone else. It was used by the Magi. They went to Herod and said, we're seeking the King of the Jews. It's used by Pontius Pilate, who says, you are the King of the Jews? And it's used by the Roman soldiers as they are tormenting our Lord, mocking him with this this very title. Interesting, because even in death, even in this slow, brutal death on the cross, Jesus is uniting the world. That is he is still being a manifestation to the Gentiles, which is exactly what Epiphany was, what exactly Epiphany is, a manifestation to the Gentiles, that is, to the whole world. And then Pilate says, when he is confronted by the elders, who complain, no, you can't put that sign there. Don't put that sign there. That's not it at all. Say, he said... He was the king of the Jews. And Pilate loses his temper temper, and says, what I have written, I have written. And in English, that shows the frustration that Pilate must have felt over this whole ordeal with this innocent man being brought to him in Latin he would have simply said, quote, scripty, scripty, which sounds mean. And maybe he was really mad, too, and not just exasperated. And so our Lord is crucified. They took his clothes, it reads. Remember, he was crucified naked. And so his clothes were taken from him. And they divided them into four parts. And then they took his tunic. His tunic were what we would call underclothes, undergarments. And it says that this tunic was without seam. It was one bolt of cloth. This was an actual weaving technique at the time. It's interesting that a person of Jesus' station in life would have such a tunic. But maybe further, it's symbolic that Jesus is dying as a high priest. He's on that cross as a high priest for us because the high priests in the temple wore garments that were of one piece that is seamless. And so they didn't want to rip this apart. And so they gambled. They gambled for Jesus' tunic. And it says to fulfill the scripture. And the scripture is from Psalm 22, verse 18. And it's interesting that it comes from Psalm 22, because in Mark, one of the words, sentences, that Jesus proclaims from the cross is in Mark 15 at the 34th verse. And it's one of the seven times in Mark that we hear Aramaic being used amongst all of the Greek. And Jesus cries out, Eloi, Eloi, laba samakhtrani. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? This begins the psalm.
and then we have the women at the cross. Most commentators have understood that there were four women there. There was Mary, the mother of Jesus, his aunt, Mary, the mother of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene makes an appearance here. Interesting that the number of four jumps out at us in this reading. We had the four soldiers who divided our Lord's clothing into four parts. And now we have four women at the foot of the cross. The number four, biblically, and to the ancient Jews, numbers were very important. And the number four represents being. And Jesus certainly was that, the ultimate human being. It's also a sense of totality. And certainly, this is what we have today, the totality of Jesus on that cross. Also, it takes its meaning from the four cardinal directions, north, south, east, west, which in Native America is very important. When they pray, they, they start their prayers to the four directions. And so this was an important part in ancient Mesopotamia as well. And it's also frequently used the number four is frequently used in Revelation. It's also the fourth day of creation. The fourth day when our material world was completed. The sun, the moon, the stars in Genesis 1.14. And it says there that God divided the day and the night. The daytime and and the nighttime with the use of the sun and the moon and the stars. So he divided the day from the night. He gave us chronos time that I mentioned just a week ago. Our time. So we have four women, four soldiers, four parts of the garment. all being gambled over. And today, we receive dice to put on our Lenten cross. We'll get two dice to remind us that our Lord's garments were gambled over. Gambling dates, we know, to the Paleolithic period, that is, a period before history was being written, Archaeologists have discovered ancient dice that people used for gaming or gambling. And there cer certainly, we know, were dice in Mesopotamia 3,000 years ago. This gambling that happens. Gaming for something. It's interesting. The temple altars elders gambled they gambled with our Lord's life Pilate gambled he gambled also with Jesus life such a gamble he made with another human being Bar Abbas that was quite a gamble he was making there and it doesn't stop there we gamble we gamble every day we gamble with our lives. We gamble when we doubt. We gamble when we fail to worship. We gamble when we practice our own forms of idolatry. And we gamble when we forget what is holy. What has been set apart for us? We gamble. 
But you know who never gambles? Jesus. Jesus never gambles. He is intentional in all that he does. He is intentional in his love for us. He is intentional in leading us to the Father. Over and over in the Gospels, he tells us just that. He is intentional on the cross where that chronos, kairos, meet. Where earth time and eternity meet. He is intentional. And he is intentional in our eternal life. The eternal life that was hinted at in Isaiah. You see, Jesus never rolls the dice. Amen. With confidence in God's grace and mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Let us give thanks for God's blessings to us, especially today. We give thanks to you, O God, for protecting and guiding us in these days. God of love, hear our prayer. Let us bring before God needs and concerns known to us For our church, our community, our state, our nation, and the whole world in these days. God of love, hear our prayer. Let us bring before God our own needs. We pray this day for Zeta Bates, Glenda Dugan, and Betty Wilkin. God of love, hear our prayer. Let us ask for God's guidance and blessing upon our time together. Lead us, O oh God, in wisdom to do what is right in these days. God of love, hear our prayer. In the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Jesus said, you will be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. I chose you and appointed you to bear fruit that will last. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, you have blessed us and given us dominion over all the earth. Increase our reverence before the mystery of life and give us new insight into your purposes for the human race and new wisdom and determination in making provision for its future in accordance with your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Jesus said, remember, I will be with you always to the end of time. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant that your holy word, which has been proclaimed this day, may enter into our hearts 
through your grace, that it may produce in us the fruit of the Spirit for witness and service into the world and to praise and honor your name through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless us and preserve us. Amen.